In this episode, I want us to start by creating an express server and to do that, you will need a code editor. My preferred code editor is Visual Studio Code. You can download the same if you want to have the same experience as me. And then the next thing that you will need is Node.js. So visit Node.js.org and download the recommended version here. So this version is more stable than the current version. So I recommend you download the recommended version for most users here. So once you download and install Node.js, now you can go to your desktop and create a new folder. And I will call this folder man. And then inside this folder, I'll create two new other folders. The first one, I'll call it frontend. And in this folder is where we'll be working on our React app. The second folder will be backend. And this is where we'll be working on our Node.js app backend. So right now, uh, we will start by working on our backend. And then later on, we'll move on to the frontend. So I'll click the backend here and visit this path by pressing CMD. This should open that path on the command prompt. And here we are. The first thing that you may want to do is to make sure that Node.js is installed in your machine. So run this command Node-V and this should give you the version of Node that you are running in your machine. If you don't see the version that you are running, maybe you get an error, you'll know that Node.js is not installed in your machine and you may need to try and reinstall it, okay? The next thing is that I want to open this folder on Visual Studio Code. So there is a shorthand for that. Just run this command, code and a period. And when I press enter, this folder should open on Visual Studio Code. So here we are. So we need to install a few dependencies for us to create our express server. And uh, let's come back to our command prompt here. And to do this, we first need to generate a package .json file. So to generate this uh, file, you need to run this command and pm init and then we apply a flag, a yes flag, enter, and a package.json file have been just generated for us, okay? And with this, we can now be able to install other dependencies that we will be needing in our application. So at the bottom here, I will install two dependencies that we are going to use in this episode. So npm i, the first dependency is express, and Express is a Node.js framework that makes creating of routes or endpoints much easier, okay? And then the second dependency we will be needing is Nodemon. And Nodemon will allow us to automatically run our server whenever we make uh, a change in our files, okay? So I'll press enter and this should install Express and Nodemon in our application. So Nodemon have been installed and I am using version 2.0 and Express version 4.17. Okay. Once this is done, I can minimize this and maximize my code editor here. And when you look at my package.json file here, you will see that at our dependencies, we have Express and Nodemon, and these are just the dependencies that we just installed. Now we can go ahead and create a new file at our backend folder, and this will be the root of our application. I'll call this file index.js. So, right here, I can say index.js, enter, and now in this index.js file, we can try to create our first express application okay the first thing that we need to do is to require express and store it in a constant so i'll say 
const express to be equal to require in brackets here express and then to create an express application all we need to do is to to invoke this express as a function so right here i can say const app will be equal to express and invoke this as a function and now this app will represent our express application okay and with this we can actually create our first route and uh, you can do this app dot get so this is a get request so with app dot get you can fetch something from this route and uh, you can use other CRUD operations with app so we can have app dot get app dot put app dot delete so this app have a lot of useful methods that we will be using in this application okay so let's create our first route here app dot get and then the first parameter for this one is the route or the endpoint that you want this one to be so i can press this to be just the home and then the second parameter can be a callback function and in this callback function i can pass two parameters that is request and uh, this is what we are getting from the client to uh, our server here and also we have a response and a response is what we are giving back to the client okay and with this we can do something in here okay so this is just an arrow function and we can do something in here and uh, what i want us to do is to send back something to the client using our response so we can say press dot send and in here we can just have a welcome message welcome to our to do's api okay so this is it and uh, this should be an arrow function and this is how we simply create an endpoint so in future when we work with mongodb we will be able to uh, get data from our database and send that data to the front end and then we need to listen to a port so right here i can say app dot recent and then the first parameter is usually a port so we can listen on port 5000 so right here i can say 5000 and then the second parameter optionally you can log something to the console so right here i can say console.log dot log server uh, we can have a message here server running on port 5000 just like that so later on we will be replacing this port with uh, an environment variable okay and we'll see how we can do that but for now let's see if this implementation works so i'll come to cmd and run this command node and then the name of the file index.js and this should run our server so enter and now you can see server running on port 5000 and this is the exact message that we pressed here so now when we visit localhost 5000 we should get this message welcome to our to do's api so i'll come back to the browser here open a new tab and visit localhost uh, 5000 enter and there we go welcome to our to do's api so earlier we installed nodemon and nodemon will allow us every time we make a change it will automatically restart our server 
so if i come to my code editor and make a change here okay i have included three dots at the end so for us to see these changes on the front end what we will need to do is to stop the server and run node index.js again and we don't want that that is a, a very bad developer experience for us so what we can do is to stop the server and run this using nodemon so nodemon will automatically detect our index.js file and uh, run it by default and it will restart the server every time we make a change on our files enter so now you can see server running on port 5000 if i come back to my browser and uh, refresh we should see these changes but now let me change uh, something let me maybe delete it again so you'll see that our server will restart so when i come back here and just refresh we should see that the changes were applied so yeah congratulations you have just created your first express application so next we will start working with mongodb so in this episode i want us to connect our express application to mongodb atlas and to do that we will be needing two more packages that is mongoose and dot env package and to install these packages i have just opened my visual studio code terminal you can do the same when you look at the very top you will see terminal when you click it you will see new terminal when you click new terminal that should open this terminal right here so let's install those two packages by this command npm i mongoose and it have a double o here and then the dot env mongoose will enable us to connect to mongodb and later on we'll be using it to create schemas and models and then the dot env package will allow us to read environment variables from a file called dot env so i have already installed mongoose and the dot env package so if i come to my package.json file you can see that i have mongoose installed here version 5.11 and dot env version 8.2 so for you just run this command and it should install mongoose and dot env as those two packages installs you can go to your browser and visit mongodb.com if you don't have an account with mongodb you can simply create one for free you will see a button uh, saying try free uh, next to the sign in button and once you create the account you will land a page just like this one and the first thing that you need to do is to create a cluster so right here you will click build a cluster just create a free cluster right here and then you are taken to a page like this one where you can uh, select a cloud provider we have aws google cloud and azure uh, in this case i'll just go with the defaults okay you can also change the region if you want but i'll go with the default so i'll just come at the very bottom and create a cluster now this will take one to three minutes to complete so be patient and wait your cluster to be created when this completes all you need to do is to click on connect so the first thing is to, to add an IP address to be whitelisted by mongodb atlas and uh, I won't be adding my current IP address because sometimes it changes so I'll allow access from anywhere and add IP address and then we need to create a database user okay so right here I will enter a username and a password so I'll enter a password test 
9.8.7. This is just an example password. You should create a more strong password than this one. And then I will create the database user. Once this is done, we can now go to the next step. Choose a connection method. And I'll go with the second option here. Connect your application. And in this last step, we will get a connection string. Okay. So I will copy this string the way it is. I can just click this copy here to copy the string. And we will be needing our database user password and also uh, the database name. Okay. So I'll cross this one. Once we copy the string, we are deploying your changes. So this will also take some time to complete. And I'll leave it at it as we go back to our code editor. By now, your mongoose and .env packages should be installed. So uh, at the moment, I'll just close the panel. And I want us to store our connection string on an environment variable. So to use the environment variable, we need to configure the .env dependency or package. So right here, we will require .env, .env, and then right here, we will tap a .config method and invoke it. And this should configure our .env uh, dependency, okay? And we can now be able to read environment variables from a .env file. Let's create a .env file. So I'll come at the root of our application, click add, and then .env. The reason we use a .env file is because it makes our application to be more secure. So for example, when we use this connection string right here, this code won't be pushed to GitHub. This file won't be pushed to GitHub. And it is not accessible from the public. It will be available on the server, but not on uh, the public code like on GitHub. And that makes our application to be more secure. So right here, I will create a variable connection underscore string and it is a convention to use caps and then right here i'll paste the string that we copied from mongodb and we enter the password for the database user here test 987 and then we enter the database name so right here i'll say to do up i'm using camel casing to do up and then the password so now this is our connection string which is stored on an environment variable called connection underscore string so how can we read this string from this file so in our index.js file i'll come here and create a constant and i'll call it connection underscore string spell this one correctly will be equal to we have a group object called process and this group object have a property called env uh, standing for environment variable so with this group object we can read environment variables from our env file so the next thing we will tap a dot connection string, which is now our environment variable from this file. I'll just copy this, copy, go back to index.js file and paste it here. So now our connection string is available on this constant. Okay, on this constant. And now the next thing we need to require mongoose. So at the very top, I'll say const mongoose will be equal to require in brackets mongoose 
and now we can use this mongoose to connect to our database so at the very bottom i will say mongoose dot connect and the first parameter here is our connection string so i can get that from connection string this one which is reading our connection string from the environment variable and then this will take some time to process so uh, we can tap a dot then method and with this dot then method we can log something to the console so an arrow function and i'll say console dot log and we can say the connection was successful so mongo db connection established okay and i can take this to the next line and if the connection fails we can catch that error so right here dot catch an arrow function we get an error and then we can console dot error and then we enter a message mongodb connection failed and then we can add an error at the very end error dot message now with this we will get some duplication warnings so the first parameter here is usually the connection string and then we have the second parameter which is options and with these options we can avoid those uh, duplication errors okay so right here just use these options so use new you are error parser and set this one to true comma and the second one here is use create index set it to true comma and the last one is use unified topology and you can set this one to true so now with this we won't get any duplication errors and this is how we connect to mongodb uh, database so right here we have mongoose the first parameter is our connection string which we are getting from a dot env file and then we pass an object here with several options if this is successful if the connection here is successful we tap a dot then method and log this message to the console if it fails we tap a dot catch method and display the error on the console so by now this one should work if uh, this one completed and it seems that it's still uh, completing and yeah now it's complete now let's test this one okay so we can go to the server and we should see mongodb connection established so i'll open command prompt and uh, i had stopped the server so i'll just run nodmon enter so we have gotten the first message server running on port 5000 and mongodb connection established so perfect our connection worked and uh, to test this one out we can enter an incorrect password maybe omit the seven and come back and see if this should work so the dot env file is not detected by nodmon so you can see how secure our application is so i can come back here and maybe change something remove this one and then add it again so that should restart our server let's see if we will get an error server running on port 5000 
MongoDB connection failed, bad auth authentication failed. So you can see if we enter an incorrect password, the connection is failing, meaning that this is working perfect. Now, one last thing. Now that you have learned about uh, environment variables, I want us to change this port to use an environment variable. And this is because when we deploy our application uh, to the cloud, this port is not uh, may not be available. Like we are not assured port 5000 will be available on that server that we will deploy our application. Now, for this reason, an environment variable is usually used. So right here, we will set another const and set it to port. And then we will use our process object and then dot env and the environment variable for the port is port. So this should read a port from the environment variable called port and it will be dynamically assigned to us once we deploy this application to the cloud. But because we are working locally, we can optionally uh, define this environment variable here. So right here, we can just say use this one or this one. So if this is not available, this one will be used. So right now we can replace this one with port and this should read either from an environment variable. If this is not available, this port will be used, okay? So let's see if our server is still running and as you can see, it's still running correctly. Now to test if this is working, we can set a port on our .env file here. So we should go to the next line. I'll scroll to the end here and press enter. I set an environment variable called port and set it to 3000. So I'll come back to my index.js file and mess up with something, maybe include three dots and this should restart the server, come back and our server should run on port 3000 and not 5000. But as uh, the root of things, this is not working. So the issue is our message. So whatever port it connects to, we are still getting this message. So we should uh, dynamically display this message depending on our port. So instead of using these quotes, I'll be using backticks right here. I use a backtick and with this, we can use a variable right here. Okay. I will use a dollar sign and then brackets here and pass in our port variable. So now we should correctly see that it is running on port 3000. So back here, server running on port 3000. Perfect. So you can see that um, our port is coming from an environment variable. But in this application, locally, we don't want to define the port. So I'll simply remove this. It was for a testing purpose. And now we should see that our, our server is running on port 5000. So right here, server should restart. Maybe I can change something, remove one here, and let's see. Server running on port 5000. So this is now cool. We have successfully connected our application to MongoDB, and also we are using a .env file to read our connection string, which is more secure. We have also worked on our port so that when we deploy our application, we will get the port from an environment variable which will be assigned to that particular server. So in the last episode, we were able to connect our application to MongoDB Atlas. And in this episode, I want us to talk about Mongoose schemas and Mongoose models. Now to create our first model, we'll come to the root of the application and add a new folder called models. And we will start by creating a to-do's model. 
inside this folder i'll create a new file called to do dot js now to create a mongoose model we'll first have to define a mongoose schema and a schema basically defines the structure of our documents so in mongodb instead of having tables and rows we usually have collections and documents so let's first create our to-do schema and you'll see uh, why we need a to-do schema and how it is useful so the first thing we will do is to import the mongoose module in this file so right here i'll say const mongoose will be equal to require in brackets mongoose and with this we'll now be able to create a mongoose schema right here i'll first uh, define a constant to do schema and this will be basically an object because we'll be creating it from a schema class which is attached to the mongoose object so right here we'll say new mongoose dot schema and in here we will add an object and this object have properties of our document so if we want a to do to have an other this is where we will add that property and add its type okay so right here we can add a name for our to do and you can set the name to be of type string but because we will be needing uh, to define different options for our name what i'll do is that i remove this string and add an object so right here we can have multiple options the first one is type to be string a comma and you can make this to be required so what you do is to just say required to be true and this will act like a validation so when you submit an empty form where we don't have a name you'll get an error okay and then right here we can set a minimum length so we just say mean length to be of three and also you can set a max length if you want so uh, i expect our to do to be short ones so right here i can set a max uh, length to be of 200 characters so this is how we simply create a mongoose schema it's an object coming from this schema class and we have properties we can define properties for our schema so this is a to-do schema so when we submit a to-do from a form it must have a name and we can add as many properties as we want so the other property that we want for our to-do is the other and this can be of type string and then we want to have a uid which is the user id to be also of type string we want to know whether a to do is complete or not so we can add is complete and this is a boolean so it should be either true or false when you submit a string to this one you will get an error and then finally we want to have a date of when our to do was created so date we can have a uh, multiple options here the type will be date and we can set a default value for our date so default to be new date and we invoke that function so if we don't submit a date it will automatically create a default date for us so this is now our to do schema and you can see that it is simply defining the structure of our document which we will be storing 
in MongoDB. Now, the next step that I want us to take is to create a Mongoose model. Now, what is a Mongoose model? A model helps us to directly interact with the database and to create a Mongoose model, we will need to use this schema. So right here, uh, I will create a new constant and I'll call it to do. The reason that I am using a capital letter here is because this to do is a class and by convention classes starts with a, a capital letter and then right here we'll set it to be equal to mongoose dot model and then inside here is the name of our collection in singular form so we want the name of our collection to be to do's so right here i'll set the name to be to do and then the second parameter for this one is our to do schema so now the only thing that remains for us to do is to export this to do model so right here i can say exports dot to do to be equal to to do and by exporting this to do we can be able to use it on any other file where we will import it and we will be using it on our to do's route so in the last video we were able to create our to do's model and i promise that we will be performing a put request where we are creating a document and saving it to the mongodb database but unfortunately we'll be doing that next after this video and this is because one of you asked me a question about exporting this module so if i come to my browser here go to my last video creating a mongoose model and scroll to the comment section you'll see that vishant asked this question and this, the question is can we export our to do's model this way export default to do and how we did it is this way now in javascript we have two ways of working with modules a module is a way of helping us to separate logic so we can define our mongoose model in index.js we can just find a press here and add all this code in here if we want and add all our routes in index.js but with time this file will become too much crowded like it will have a lot of lines of codes it will become a hard to lead the code and so on and so forth now to simplify things we have modules we can create our own modules we separate logic like the way we did here we are separating the logic of creating a model and then we can simply import all this logic with some few lines of codes to another file and use it there and also you can see that we can use third party uh, modules or libraries for example mongoose is now a third party uh, module in this file we have express and this is now a third party module we didn't create this it is a variable in npm and if you want you can also create your own module and uh, upload it to npm and uh, maybe you can advertise it so this way we can use modules that are already created by other individuals and this makes our work very easy so as i was saying we have two ways of working with modules the first way is using the common js and the common js way is by using the require statement where we require a module and store it in a constant and now we can use this constant to perform other operations and then how we export modules is by using a global object called module so if i come to index.js file and uh, right here i can console.log console.log module 
and you will see that this is a global object so if you come to the console and uh, you will see that module is a global object with a lot of properties and the property that we are interested in is our exports property so to export this to do we can alternatively say here module dot exports dot to do and we set this one to to do so what is happening we are accessing our global object called module we are accessing the exports property and when you pay a cross attention to it you will say this exports property is set to an empty object so when we say dot to do we are simply adding a new property to this exports object and this to do property we are setting it to be our model so you can change the name of this if you want but you can change the name of this the name that you use here must be the same as this one and it seems like i messed up something here and there we go so what we are doing uh, a recap we are accessing modules and then we access the exports property and add our own property called to do so by this we are able to export our to do model and these two lines basically do the same thing okay so if i comment out to this one come to index.js and try to import our to do model right here we can say const to do will be equal to require we access this folder which is on the same uh, path so stroke models and then we access our to do file so we don't need to add .js when we are using require node.js will automatically add it for us so now we can log this to do to the console so right here i'll say to do let's come back and i'll scroll at the bottom i'll try to restart the server by pressing space here and you'll see that this is an object which is now our exports object and inside this object we have a property called to do and this to do is our model so now to directly access our model what we can do is to destructure this property so right here you can wrap this one inside the curry brackets and this will directly get our model this way so now when i come back to the console try to restart the server here you'll see that now we are directly getting our to do's model and uh, the way we exported this is by using this method exports dot to do to do now let me comment out this one and let's use this one i'll come back to the console and uh, try to restart and you can see that we are getting the same same result now what if we want to have a default export because this is like a named export because we have to destructure it from our exports object so to have a default export what we can do is to exclude this to do okay so we have module.exports is equals to to do and this will directly give us our to do's model when we import it here and because we don't have this property we are not destructuring it so i remove this one and now we should still get the same result so right here i'll try to restart the server and you see we are still getting the same same result but this won't work the same way now with our exports here if we try to remove this property this won't work for some reasons so um, 
if I try to comment out this one, come back to the console and refresh, you'll see that we are getting an empty object. So don't don't use exports is equals to, to do at all. If you want to use exports only, you need to add the dot to do property. Okay. So now we have seen that we have uh, three methods here. We can use this one. We can use, let me type them out. We can use module dot export dot to do is equals to to do so these two are basically the same and this one is a bit different so let me revit this one so that in here we can do it this way okay so yeah now that is the first way of working with uh, modules so we can use the require statement and then we can export our modules this way now the second way is using es6 syntax and with es6 we use an import statement to import our modules so to use es6 to work with our modules we need to come to package.json file and below the main property here we can add type and the type that we will be adding here is module and now this line of code will allow us to use the import statement to work with modules so when i come back to my to do.js here we can now omit our require statement here i'll comment it out and then we can use import mongoose from mongoose and now this is how we can use the import statement to import modules in this file okay so now how can we export our module using the es6 syntax what i'll do i'll just comment out this and then below here we can now use this line of code export default to do now when i come here and paste this one here i have just pasted it the way it is now we can come to index.js and we need to get rid of all the required statements first of all this is not importing so i'll take this line of code below our imports that way and then i'll comment all these ones move at the top and you'll see that i have already imported them using the import statement and uncomment this okay so what do we have here we have import express from express import mongoose from mongoose and then import dot env from dot env and now we are importing our to do now when using the import statement we must include this to js when we omit this it will draw an error unlike when using require okay uh, i'll remove this one and remain with this one here when we log this to the console we should see that we are exporting our to do model so here we are using require so let's get rid of require i'll come to index.js and get rid of require and see what we have it's refreshing and you can see that mongodb connection failed because we are not configuring our env file so let me come back to my browser here and go to this other video where we were connecting mongodb atlas so our friend who is vishant also asked how to write import.env file using module method so how can we use import statement to configure our .env file so i'll come back to the code this is how we are importing our .env file using the import statement now to configure this file so that we can read 
environment variables from the .env file, all we need to do is to use now this .env. So we can say .env dot config and we invoke config and this will configure now our .env module so that we can read environment variables from a .env file. So now we should get our to do to the console right here and you'll see that we are getting model as to do and this is now a default export export default to do how can we have a named export so i can remove this one actually i'll just comment it out so that you can see it with with this one with es6 we can use this syntax export const to do and this will now be a named export so uh, let's see if we are getting something to the console we are getting an error and the error we are getting is that uh, this file this module to do.js does not provide an export named default so we don't have a default export in this module it's a named export and to import it what we need to do is to destructure it so right here we need to use curly brackets and then curly brackets so when i come back to this and uh, it refreshes you'll see that we are still getting our model so and that's it so just a recap we have import for importing modules in es6 and to configure es6 imports you need to come to package.json and add this property here and we also have the require which comes by default in our node.js and then finally the way we can configure our env file is to import our module and then configure it just like this so in the rest of the videos personally i'll be using require but if you uh, find import more comfortable with you you can use it but the good thing with import is that it's the same syntax this syntax is the same syntax that is used in react but because it's experimental in node.js i won't uh, depending on it so i'll just get rid of all of this and i'll stick to my uh, old school method and we won't be using our to do's model in this file we'll be creating a to do's route so i'll just get rid of this also and then we configure our env we invoke our application here and then in our to do file i'll stick to the old school method remove this one and also uh, i'll stick to my export here okay so you can use any export that you want and that's it for this video i hope it was helpful and now i'll see you next so in the last video we were able to work with our modules how we can import them how we can export them and so on and so forth so in this video i want us to perform a post request okay but before we do that I want to do some cleanup right here i can see i am exporting to do twice so i don't need to include this export here and then i'll come to my package.json file and remove this configuration which i had included in the last video because i'll be using require this configuration will draw an error in my application but if you are using the import statement make sure this configuration is here so for me i'll just remove it okay and now our app should run without errors let me see uh it's restarting and yeah server running on port 5000 and mongodb connection established so the next thing that i want us to do is to install a package that we will need to configure so I have just opened the terminal here and all you need to do is to say npm i course and this course stands for cross origin resource sharing it allows us 
to access our endpoints from a different domain. For example, we'll be hosting our React app from a different domain and uh, this course will allow us to access our endpoints from different domain, okay? So in my index.js file, I will import this course after just hitting enter so that it installs as we proceed. So right here, how we will import this package is by saying const course will be equal to require and then course. And how we configure this one is by using a method available in our app called use. So right here, I'll say app.use. And then I pass in course here. And course is now a middleware. Every time we use app.use, you'll know that we are now using a middleware function. And a middleware function simply adds functionality to our application. It is added to the uh, request pipeline and it have access to this request, it have access to response, and it have access to a method called next, okay? And next allows the middleware to pass functionality to the next middleware. So it can access request and change the body of the request. It can send something to the client and thus terminating the, the process and it can pass functionality to the next middleware function, okay? Later on, we'll be learning more about middleware functions when creating our own middleware function, okay? So for now, don't worry too much about it. Just know that it adds functionality to our application and it have access to request, response, and next. The next thing that we will do is to configure JSON. So right here, I'll say app.use and how we configure JSON in our application is by using express, okay? So how we do that is by saying express.json and then we invoke it. And now this is a middleware function. And what this middleware function will allow us to do is to pass JSON in the request object, okay? Because we'll be working with JSON data and that will allow us to pass JSON in the body of the request. Okay, now that we have configured these two, we'll go to the root of the application and add a new folder called routes and this will help us to create all our endpoints in this routes folder we'll add a new file in this folder called todos and in this file is where we'll have all our todos endpoints okay and that way our index.js will remain to be simple and easy to read so in our todos.js i will open this the first thing that we need to do is to import our todos model so this model that we created here and exported it is what we need to use in this todos.js file i will say const to do so as i told you before here we are extracting the todos property from the exports object which is a variable in a global object called module okay and then we get this from require we need to go to the models folder so two dots and a slash we go to models stroke to do the next thing that we need to do is to import express so here i'll say const express will be equal to require express Area we used express here to create our main app. So if I come to index.js, you'll see that we imported express this way and then used it to create our main app. And we can use the same same uh, procedure, but right now we'll be creating a mini app to help us work with our routes. So in our todos.js file, I will say right here const router will be equal to express 
dot router now this is a router class that is available in express and we invoke it so this way we are creating an instance of our router and this instance is now an object representing a mini application and this mini app we can use it to create our endpoints so at the bottom here we can create an endpoint so router dot post and now this will handle the post requests the first parameter is a path and then the second parameter is a callback function and this callback function have access to request and response and then so in here we'll be creating a document using our model okay and this document is simply an object okay so right here i can say that to do so this is how we define a variable in javascript using let and then we say is equals to new to do and this to do is our model and as i told you before this to do is a class and when we use the new keyword here we are now making it to be a constructor to create our object okay and now right here we can invoke it and pass several properties inside here as an object and these properties are similar properties to what we included in our to do schema so as you can see the to do schema was uh, shaping our document it was giving us a structure of how our document will look like okay so we should have a property called name other uid is complete and date so in our to do's here i'll say name will be equal to request and then we tap dot body dot name okay so this is how we access the properties that we send in form of json from our request so request dot body dot name we can extract all our properties the name the other from the request body this way okay so at the top here I will extract the properties this is how we do it you can do this way if you want but an alternative way you can extract the properties just like this so right here i'll say const i include these curly brackets to extract the properties we will be extracting the name from request.body we will be extracting the author we will be extracting is complete complete and then uh, we'll be extracting the date and the uid so they don't have to be in order okay you can use any order you want and then uh, this will be coming from request dot body and we don't now need to keep repeating request dot body when adding our properties we can simply say uh, name will be equal to name and then even a better implementation you can see the key here and the value are the same when key and values are the same you can use only name so now we can just say name so this is now a better implementation because all we need to do is to pass all these other properties in here i'll copy this and then paste here and with this we are now creating a to do's a document okay now this is a document which will contain all these properties once we send a request from the client the next step is saving this document to the database how we do that is that uh, this to do have a method called save so we can say to do dot save and when we invoke this method our document will be saved to the database but this is now an asynchronous request it will take some time to process and then it will return a promise to us so for that we can either use async await or we can use the dot then method so i'll start by using the dot then method here so to do dot save you can tap a dot then method and then in here 
we will get a to do once this is complete a response will be given to us and that response is our to do document so right here we'll get a to do and then we use an arrow function and we can do something in here with this to do for example we can now send this to do to the client by using res dot send and we pass the to do here as simple as that and then we can tap a dot catch method here so right here you can say dot catch we have an error object we have access to an error object here and then we use an arrow function and we can log this error to the console this way console dot log and then we say error dot message this way okay so we save the document it takes some time to process once it's done it returns a to do we send this to do to the client if there is an error we catch the error and drop the error to the console or alternatively you can send this error to the client so the other way of doing this is by using async await so what i'll do is that i'll remove all this code you can use this method if you want but i remove it and then using async await right here we'll be getting a promise so we await it so we will say await and store this promise in a to do we area define this as a variable so we can reuse it here to do will be equal to await to do dot save and now our to do will be a variable in this variable and then the next step uh, we will send a response to the client res dot send and we pass our to do in here but when using await we need to wrap our function with async so you can see this is our callback function so we can wrap it with async here this way okay so async await and then how do we handle the errors in the dot then method we used a dot catch to catch the errors in this one we use the try and catch block okay so right here we can try and then in here we include this code and then right here we can catch an error if there is any so right here we have access to the error object and then we can log it to the console if we want so we, we will log it to the console and also we can send an error to the client so right here we'll say res dot status and this with this we can set the status of the request and we'll be using the status 500 which means that a server error occurred and then we can send a message the client so dot send and we include the message here error dot message and we can also log the error to the console console dot log uh, error dot message this way and when i save this file you'll see that i am using prettier and it will auto format the code for me and then i can include a spacing here for better readability so just a quick recap we are extracting our properties here from request.body we are creating a document using the the to do model and passing these properties inside this model and then we are using a try and catch block to handle the errors and then we are saving our to do document to the to the database using to do dot save and sending the response to the client and then in our errors we are sending an error message to the client and a status of 500 meaning that this is a server error and then we are logging also the error to the console now we need to use this file in our index.js so at the bottom here we need to export it so i'll say module dot exports in the last video we learned more about exports and we saw this global object called module 
and it have a property called exports and we can by default uh, set this one to router and now here we are exporting our mini app from this module and our router have our endpoint which is this one here okay so let's go to index.js and import this file right here so uh, at the top i will say const to do will be equal to require we will go to the routes stroke to do that way and then uh, just at the bottom here after this middlewares i will include app dot use okay because now this is acting as a middleware because of our mini app so if i come to the to do here we defined our mini app here and this mini app is like a middleware function so we should use app dot use and then the first parameter here we can pass in the path okay the path of our to do endpoint i want us to be stroke api stroke to do and then the path that we included here in our to do's.js file here this path will be automatically added at the end here okay so if you use a stroke something in our to do's here stroke example now our endpoint will be localhost 5000 stroke api stroke to do's stroke examples but for now it will be localhost 5000 stroke api stroke to do's okay and then the second parameter is now our mini app so to do's and this is how we do it and we have just created uh, a post endpoint to handle our post requests so in the next video we are going to test this endpoint using postman okay so first of all i'll come back to my uh, server here and see if everything runs server running on port 5000 and mongodb connection established so everything is working and uh, our course was successfully installed here make sure yours is also successfully installed and i can cancel this one so i'll see you next where we'll be testing this endpoint and see if everything now works okay so in the last episode we were able to create an api endpoint to handle post requests and in this episode i want us to test this api endpoint using postman the first thing is to open your browser and visit postman.com slash downloads and then you can download postman for your os for windows and if you are using mac just scroll at the bottom here and you can download for mac or linux once you download postman and install it just open it and you learn to a page like this one at the top here open a new tab and this is where you can test the endpoints so you can test a get request post request put patch and delete so these are the CRUD operations and let's start by testing a get endpoint which we created earlier in my index.js file here you'll see that we created an api endpoint to handle get request so when we test this endpoint we should get a welcome message welcome to our to do api so now let's test this endpoint right here we type the url which is http full colon double slash and then we are running our server on localhost full colon 5000 and then this is the home page when we send this request we should get that welcome message so send and there we go welcome to our to do api so this endpoint is working okay now let's test our post endpoint which we created on our to do file okay so when i come to the to do's.js this is where we created our 
post endpoint and we can test this endpoint with postman so uh, the first thing is to enter the url which is http localhost 5000 but right now we'll add something at the end here because at our path in index.js we included stroke api stroke to do's so i'll copy api stroke to do's and then in my url here i'll add it here and then we need to send something to the body of the request so right here we have body and then click row and we'll be sending our data in json format so here at the drop down select json and i'll enter sample data here in form of an object the first property is name and the name can be our first to do and then the other property was uh, author and the other can be charles and then is complete so this was a boolean so it must be either true or false so right here it's a false and uh, i can enter these three properties although we had more than this so if we come to our to do schema you'll see that only the name was required so if we omit these other properties it should not throw an error so we have a name an other and is complete date will be added automatically because we included a default date and uh, we can omit the uid so now when we send this request we should get a to do back because uh, in our endpoint let me show you once we save our to do we are also sending the same to do to the user once it have already been saved okay so let's uh, send this request submit and perfect now we are getting a to do back and you can see now it have additional values because this is now coming from the database we have a date which was automatically added by default we have an id which is a string of characters this was added automatically by mongodb and then we have what we included in the body of the request name order is complete and also we have a version for this particular to do uh, now when we go to mongodb we should see this data okay so i'll open my browser and then go to mongodb atlas now right here you can click collections and you should see that a database was created automatically called to do app and when i come here this is the data that we just added name order and is complete now where did this name come from this is the name of the database remember in our connection string in our env file we had included the name of our database here to do app so this is the name that was added now let's test whether this validation works where we set a minimum of three and maximum of uh, 200 and we made the name to be required so i'll come back to postman and i'll omit the name let's submit and now we should get an error to do validation field name path name is required now let's include a name but with fewer characters than three so i revert this and delete uh, something only include two characters when i submit this we should also get an error to do validation field name path name is shorter than the minimum allowed range which is three so you can see that our mongoose validation is working now in the next video we will look at further uh, data validation using joy so in the last episode we were able to test our post endpoint and 
we were also able to see that our mongoose data validation works. Now in this episode, I want us to perform further data validation using Joy. So when I come to my browser here, you'll see that I am in Joy uh, documentation. So just visit joy.dev and I want us to go through this example together. And then after this, we'll try to use Joy in our application. So the first thing is to obviously install Joy. So as we go through this example, you can run this command in your terminal. So in my VS code, you can run this command to install Joy in your application. npm i and then you say Joy. And this command should install Joy in your application. So for me, I have already installed uh, Joy. So I'll skip this step. But for you, make sure you hit enter and install Joy as we check at this example. So as you can see right here, we are importing Joy from Joy. And then the second thing is to create a schema. So we already created a mongoose schema. Now this schema is just similar to the mongoose schema. Okay, it is just um, containing the properties that we should save to MongoDB. So how we create a joy schema is by calling joy dot object, and uh, this is a method, and we pass an object here which contains the properties that we want to save to MongoDB. Okay, and then right here you can see. This is now a username and uh, the type of a username is a string. Now in Joy, to define a string, you call a dot string method, which is attached to uh, our Joy here. To set a minimum value, you tap a dot min method here and then you set the minimum value and then you tap a dot max to set a maximum value and also you can set it to be required by tapping a required method and then after creating a schema the other step is uh, when i scroll at the bottom here is calling a dot validate method which is available in our schema object okay so we tap a dot validate method and inside that validate method we pass the data that we are getting from the client now in our case this data will be available in request.body and the return of this uh, call is a value or an error if there is any so the value is the data that was passed just right here and then the error is an error message uh, from joy depending on the validation so like in this case you can see when we call a dot validate with an empty object you can see the error we are getting is that name should be required so i'll show you how we can extract the value and error and store them in a constant so that we can use them in our application now let's go back to our app and try to use joy in our app so first of all you might wonder why are we doing a double validation we, we already have this validation why do we need joy so the reason we need joy in our application is because sometimes uh, the data that we get from the client is not the same data that we save to the database so we need to validate the data that we are getting from the client directory and then sometimes we manipulate the data in our api here before we actually save it to the database and that is why we need mongoose data validation which will happen while saving the data to the database and a good example for this is uh, the password so when we get a password from the client side it's usually in text form okay just some simple text okay but when we come back to our endpoints we usually manipulate the password and encrypt it to 
a very long string which is not the same length as the one that was entered by the client and that password also need to be further validated by our mongoose schema so that we can then save it to the database another reason is because um, joy have an awesome way of displaying error messages so we can send these messages directly to the client now let's make use of joy and uh, i'll assume that your package have already installed here so let's import it at the top we will say const joy is equals to require joy and then we can now use joy inside our route here okay so right here the first thing we will do is to define a schema to create our joy schema we use joy dot object and we invoke this method and pass an object in here containing the properties uh, that we want to validate now we want to validate the name to be a string so joy dot string and this is a method we tap other methods at the end here we want it to have a minimum value of three and then a maximum value of 200 characters and we also want it to be required now this this line right here is similar to what we had in our mongoose schema so here we were passing an object and then type string required true mean three maximum of 200 now let's uh, go to the other and uh, i need to call this required like that and then right here we include the other and um, now we will use joy dot string and we can also set a minimum a value for the other to be three so right here i'll say a mean of three and also a max of that characters so a mean of three and a max of that now let's do the same in our mongoose so to do this in mongoose schema we need to convert this to an object so that we can pass different options the first one is type to be string and then uh, the second one is mean length uh, to be three and the other one is max length to be 30 now this will be is similar to what we have here but uh, now we are using different packages so right here we'll say uid and we simply want this to be of type string so joy dot string and we invoke that as a method there we go to the other one which is is complete and this should be a boolean so we say joy dot boolean and we invoke it and then lastly we have a date and this should be joy dot date so now perfect we are now creating a schema with all these properties now let's see uh, whether we can get error messages from our schema okay so what we can do is to first call the validate method which is attached to our schema object so right here we'll say schema dot validate and we pass the data that we are validating right here and we'll be simply validating our request dot body because it's the one that is containing our object with all these properties so right here i'll just say request dot body and this should be an object containing 
the properties if you want to destructure you must set this to be an object and then pass the properties okay so you see the difference so request dot body so this is our value and earlier we saw that this is returning either an error and a value so a value is being returned and an error is optional if there is an error it will be returned if there is no error will be undefined so uh, we can store the error and values in a constant because they were in form of an object we can say const and then we destructure them from the object let me show you so uh, at the bottom here when i scroll you will see that we have an object which contains a value and an error so we can destructure the value and errors from this object so that is what we are doing we get a value and then we also get an error from here now we have access to error and object and we can log this to the console so at the bottom here i'll simply say console uh, dot log we log the value to the console and we can also log the error yeah let's try this one out and uh, what i'll do is that i'll go to postman and perform a post request so that this code runs so in my postman here uh, i already have an invalid name here so and i can also include an invalid author uh -huh. so the other i'll set it to two characters so that it's invalid also and let's send this request and we are getting an error yeah so this error is becoming because uh, we didn't include a comma at the end here i also cross this one and i'll need to restart my server here i'll stop it and restart it with nodemon so don't let errors scare you because uh, as a developer you'll always uh, encounter errors so back to postman let's send this request again our request is hanging so when i check here you can see unhandled promise rejection type error joy.string.mean is not a function so let me check my code you see right here i also made this mistake where i didn't invoke the string method okay so yeah these are just typos make sure you don't have the same typos as me so now let's uh, see server is running again and then i'll send the request again and now uh, everything have uh, worked so these error messages which you are getting here is from mongoose and we are getting two error messages the first one is for our name and the second one is for our author now let's take a look at the output of joy and remember we logged the errors to the console and the value so i'll come to this uh, terminal where we were running our server and you can see we have an output here and you can see the first thing we have is the value okay as uh, the same way we logged to the console the very first and then the error so and you can see the value contains just what we sent from postman and then the error so you can see uh, how it's displaying error messages nicely limb length must be at least three characters long okay and then when we look at our details here this is where we have the error message but now in joy you can see we are getting only one error message and this is so because joy aborts the validation process once it gets an error so when it gets an error in name it will abort the validation process and uh, return that error to the user but there is a way that we can go around this and display all the error messages right here right here we can tap options so we invoke this and pass an object in here the option that we will pass is uh, about 
early and this option is set to true by default so all you need to do is to set this to false and this will enable joy to display uh, multiple error messages it will validate all the properties and then uh, give us a feedback so now let's send uh, the request one more time and see if we get two error messages so i'll come to postman and submit the request this is like hanging and uh, i don't know if i have an error so our server is not running and i'll press this space to make it restart let me send it again so this is the area error messages that we are getting but let me resend this one and now in the console you'll see that in details we have two error messages now name and other so if you want to access all the error messages you can include these options right here and set the about array to false uh, but in my case all i want is to display each error at a time so i'm just keeping it simple so right here i remove the options and once we get an error i want to send this error to the client okay so i want to send a response to the client so how we can do that is to check if this error is available so if there is an error it will be available if there is no error it will be undefined so we don't need to use the value in this case so i'll remove it and also remove this log so right here i'll perform a check if error exists uh, we want to return something to the client and what this will do it will terminate all this process and it won't even reach to our uh, mongoose schema so we will return this error to the client so right here we can use our res object here and we'll say res dot status and we will set the status code to be 400 and this this means that this is a bad request from the client meaning that this is a client error and not a server error so the client should change the values or do something so that this works okay so status code 400 just means this is a bad request and it is a client's error and then we can send a message to the client so dot send and we want to access our error message so when i come to uh, joy here how can we access this message we have access to our error here so we can set error and then we tap uh, dot details and access the first value from this array okay because this is an array of objects and then we access the message from uh, that now let's do this right here uh, we have access to error uh, dot details now details is an array containing our errors okay our error objects okay so we access the first object this way and then uh, we include a zero so this is the first object in our array okay and once we access this object we can now access our message property so right here i'll just say dot message and this should give us uh, this message right here name rent must be at least three characters long and uh, we won't be having this one because we removed the options so if this one uh, is varied this is when we will get this error okay so let's test our application i'll press space to restart this and uh, uh, go to postman and now when i send this request we should get a response here from joy so and perfect name length must be at least three characters wrong and this is coming from joy now let's make the name to be more, more than three characters wrong maybe our and try to send this request and now we get the second error 
other rent must be at least three characters wrong so you can see we are uh, aborting everything by returning a response to the client so this this process doesn't happen where we are creating a document and saving it to the database now once all this is varied is when we will perform these other uh, functionalities now let's test with varied values so maybe here i can say our second to do and send a varied other charles and once i send this one now we should not get any error here okay so send and we are getting back our to do now let's see if this is available in our database now when i come to my collections and then uh, in our to do's collections you'll see that we have two uh, documents right here so as you can see in mongodb we don't have uh, tables we have collections and documents and that's it for this video in the next video we'll see how we can get this data from the database and send it to the client so we will be handling get requests in this episode i want us to create an endpoint to handle get requests so at the top here i just say router dot get and then the first parameter is our path and a second parameter is a callback function which have access to request and response and since we'll be handling promises in this function i wrap our function with a sync so right here i'll say a sync and then our callback function have access to request and response and we can set it to be an arrow function now in here we can get our to do's from the database using our to do model which we had created earlier in our models folder to do.js and uh, exported it as to do so in my to do's.js i'll say to do and we have a method called find and with this method we can be able to get all the to do's that are in our database so i'll invoke this method and this will return a promise so we can await it and store this in a constant okay so right here i can say const to do's uh, i'll spell this correctly so what we will get from to do dot find is our to do's uh, we can send this to the user just like this rest dot send to do's and let's test whether we are getting our to do's so i'll come to postman and we'll now perform a get request so i'll change this to get and then the endpoint remains as it is so i'll send this request and we should get our to do's from the database and there we go so now we are receiving our document which is our to do's from the database now we can create more complex queries with this to do dot find we can chain uh, other methods to perform more complex queries now let's see our mongoose documentation here just go to mongoose.com stroke docs stroke queries and we can look at this example right here so we have performed a, a to do dot find and we included nothing inside here so when we include some properties or options in in here we are simply filtering our to do's so for example we can filter our to do's depending whether they are complete or not complete just like this so right here we can say 
uh, we pass an object and then this complete we can set it to uh, true so if there are no complete to do's we should get an empty array but if there are complete to do's those to do's are returned by this endpoint now when i come to postman and try to test this we should get an empty array because or our is complete here is set to false so i'll submit and you'll see that we are getting an empty array so this is how we perform a filter using the properties and you can include multiple properties so back in my documentation here you'll see that you can include any property that is available in the document and then you can filter using the comparison operators so for example here age we have this comparison operators okay so you set age to be an object instead of setting it directly to be maybe 17 you set it to an object and then you can say age uh, to be greater than 17 and less than 66 so we have more uh, comparison operators like uh, in here just search for mongodb comparison operators and click this option docs.mongodb and you'll get a page just like this and here you can see all the comparison operators that you can use you can use equal to uh, where you filter depending on equal values greater than greater than or equal to and then in matches any of the values specified in an array so in this mongoose documentation you can see that in we are passing an array and we are passing several values documents uh, that have the property likes containing vaporizing and talking are the one that will be returned and then we have more less than less than or equal to not equal to and uh, not in okay and we have more uh, query operators like the logical query operators so you can check uh, this documentation if you want to perform more complex queries and then in my mongoose documentation here we can get a certain number of documents okay so we can limit it to only 10 documents you just tap a dot limit method here and pass the number of documents that you want that to be returned you can sort so in our query here we can sort depending on the date so right here it says sort and then in brackets i include an object and i want date to be in descending order so here documents that were added last will appear first and to sort in ascending order you just include a one so all the documents will be will appear first so this is sorting and then we have more you can select certain properties that you want to be returned to the client so for example we can select only the name and let's try that one out right here you can say dot select and then you pass an object and you set the name to one so this means this is true okay so name will be selected and then uh, let's see this last one you execute uh, a callback let's see what we get from this query we are filtering depending on whether it's complete so here we will get an empty array so let's change this to false so that we get some uh, documents and then we are setting uh, the date to be in descending order and then we are selecting only the name property so let's come to our postman and send this request one more time and you'll see that now we are getting only one property and an id so this is how you can uh, perform more complex queries and you can check on the comparison operators and also the logical operators so in my case i won't be performing any filtering at this point but later on when we add authentication we will filter 
our documents depending on the author or the UID okay so I remove this and then we'll sort our document using the date so that uh, the to do's that were added last will appear first and then right here we won't select any fields we will turn all the fields to the user and this is an async action so we need to wrap this in a try and catch block okay so right here i uh, will say try and i'll move this inside this try and in case of any errors i'll catch them right here so i'll say catch we have access to our error object here and we can send an error message to the client so right here i'll say res dot status and we use the status code 500 meaning that this is a server error and then we send a message right here dot send and we will get the message from error dot message uh, just like that and then we can also log the error to the console so right here i'll say console dot log uh, error dot message and that's it uh, this is how we can handle get requests so we use to do dot find you can apply some filters here if you want you can sort you can set a limit you can use the comparison or logical operators and then you send those to do's to the client if there is an error you log the error to the console or send an error to the client now let's test this uh, endpoint one more last time by performing a get request so i'll perform a get request and i am getting all my to do's so that's it for this video and in the next video we will try to delete our documents from the database so we will create an endpoint to handle delete requests so in the last episode we were able to create this endpoint for handling the get requests and in this episode i want us to create another endpoint to handle delete requests so i'll scroll at the bottom here and this is where i'll create an endpoint to handle the delete requests so we'll say router dot delete and as usual the first parameter here is the path and then the second parameter will be a callback function which will be an async function and then we have access to request and response and we set it to be an arrow function just like this and now we can uh, do something in here so i want to show you three ways in which you can delete documents from mongodb and the first way is by using delete one method and the delete one method uh, will delete one document from uh, the database and then we have another method called delete many and the other method that we will use is a find by id and delete so we have three methods which we will try out the first one uh, is delete one which will remove one document from the database delete many will obviously remove many documents from the database and this one will remove a document uh, depending on its id and this one is supposed to be in camera casing okay okay now let's try the first method right here so we will use our to do model to do and this method is now available in this model to do dot delete one and we invoke this method now whatever we pass in here is a filter we can filter the document that we want to delete in form of an object the same way we performed a filter when we were trying to get our to do's from the database so we can pass properties 
uh, for the document that we want to delete we can pass an id that is one of the best way to delete a specific document but you can also pass other properties like is complete and you specify the value so if i set here is complete to be true we will delete a document that have is complete to true but with this we may have more than one documents or to do's that have a property is complete set to true so the first document that will be found by mongodb is the one that will be deleted this process will return a promise so we can await it and we can store uh, the result in a constant just like this so const uh, to do and when using delete one this to do just have some information of the number of documents that were deleted and the time that it took to delete the document and some other details okay we can send this to the client just like this res dot send to do okay now let's go to postman add a new document set it to true and then test this delete endpoint okay so i'll come to postman and i'll perform a post request and actually i'll just use one of these from the history here so i'll click this and then when we come to the body of request we'll see that we already have some data because it's something that we have done before we can set this one to true and we can also change the other so that we differentiate and we set it to ciao so let's perform a post request and we get the to do that was added to the database let's perform a get request we confirm that we have three documents in our database okay so i have also reused uh, one of these i send and uh, when i scroll here you'll see that we have three documents in the database this is set false this is false this is true and the other is chow this is charles this is charles now let's perform a delete request and see if this document will be deleted from our database so right here i'll just set this to delete and the path is the same okay now i will send this and look what we get back we get the number of documents that were deleted it is one document and some other information now let's perform a get request again and see if we have two documents in the database i will send and perfect now the to do that head is complete as true is gone so this is one of the way that you can perform a deletion of documents in the database and you can pass uh, any kind of filter that you want here okay let's try delete many we will just change this to many okay and then we can set this to false and this should delete all the documents that have is complete as false so this should clear our database because our database have two documents uh, which are set to false now let's perform a direct request at this endpoint i will submit and look what we get back two documents were deleted and some other information now let's perform a get request and confirm that we are getting an empty array i will send and perfect there are no documents in the database so by using delete many is another way you can delete documents from the database now let's use find by id and delete so i'll just replace this method right here find by id and delete just like that and now all we need to do is to pass an id in here so how we usually do this is by passing an id to our path so we can change our path here 
and we include a parameter this just like this way we will include a parameter called id okay and to read this parameter so that we can use it here we will use request dot params so this is an object that will allow us to read this uh, parameters that we use here and the parameter that we added is id so i'll just pass dot id here uh, the next thing is that uh, what we get right here is the deleted to do okay so right here i can just say deleted to do to be more specific deleted to do so we can test this one out i'll come back to postman and we don't have any document at the moment so i will use one of these and um let's set this one to our uh, test to do i send and perform a get request to confirm that we have this document in the database and there we go so our test to do is there now let's try to delete this to do using uh, our third method of so we will need the id of this to do i copy this we perform a delete request and i need to include this id at the end here so stroke id let's send this request and we are still getting back the to do that we deleted now let's perform a get request to confirm that we have an empty array in our database i will send and we get an error and this is because our get uh, request is trying to reach this endpoint which have an id so we need to remove this and perform a get request and we get an empty array meaning that that to do was actually deleted so back to my code here you have seen that we can use all these methods to uh, delete a document from to do and the method that we will be going with is find by id and delete so i remove these ones and remain with this piece of code now we need to wrap this in a try and catch block so that we catch the errors so right here i'll say try and we pass this code in here and then we catch the error we have access to our error object and we can send the error to the client so right here i'll say res uh, dot status we use the status code 500 meaning that this is a server error and then we send the error to the client uh, just like this error dot message and then we can also log the error to the console so right here i'll say console dot log error dot message and when i save this i am using prettier and it should uh, format my code so that's it for this video but in future when we add authentication uh, we'll come and make some more changes in this endpoint but for now this is good enough and in the next video we will create another endpoint to edit our to do's so in the last episode we were able to create an endpoint to handle the delete requests and in this episode i want us to create another endpoint to handle the put requests so put is used to edit a document and uh, there are two requests which you can perform to edit a document the first one is put and the other one is patch so in this video we will start by handling put requests and then in the next video we will handle patch requests so at the top here i'll create a new endpoint using router dot put and the first parameter is the path 
and the path here should have an ID of the document that we want to edit just like we did with our delete here okay so right here I will include a path and also pass an ID to this path and then the second parameter here is an async function so I'll say async and it is an arrow function which accept request and response and then in here we'll be able to do something okay so let me create good spacing there and we continue down here now with put requests we usually send a new version of an existing document okay it's like we are replacing the existing document with a new one okay and to do that we usually send a new version of the request body so at the top here since we will be getting the data from the client we will validate the data using joy just like we did with our post request so i won't repeat the whole of this process i'll just copy all this code from where we are creating a schema getting an error from schema dot validate and then checking if the error exists or not if it exists we send the error message to the client so i'll copy this code and then uh, come at the bottom here where we have our put here and paste this code so the next step after we check this we need to check whether the document with this particular id exists or not so just right here we will use our model which is to do and then call this method dot find by id and then in here we will pass the id that we are getting from our path here okay and earlier we used request.params.id to read ids that are included in the url so right here we'll just say request.params.id and this will check whether a document exists in our database or not and right here we will await this process because it will return a promise so await and we store it on a constant so right here i'll say const to do will be equal to await to do dot find by id and then we pass the id in here and we are reading this id from our path so now we can perform an if statement and we'll say if we will use an exclamation mark here meaning not okay if not to do so to do does not exist we will send a 404 error meaning that the to do uh, was not found okay or the source was not found so right here we'll terminate uh, the rest of the process by calling return and we say res dot status 404 now this means that uh, this resource was not found and then we send a message to the client just like this dot send and what we will say here is to do not found and i can pass some dots there and that's it so if this resource does not exist we will tell the client that it does not exist okay but if it exists so this won't be called and we'll proceed to updating our to do now right here uh, we'll say to do dot find by id and update that way and we call this function the first parameter is the id of the to do that we want to update which is a variable in request dot params dot id and then the second parameter is the body of the request so it contains the name the other the uid and is complete and that is what we will pass at the second parameter here so i'll just come to our post right here and reuse this code where we were destructuring the name the other is complete date and uid 
from request.body and I'll come right here just before we perform this update I'll paste that code right here okay and we'll pass the name the author is complete and date in this object now this will return a promise so we can await it and store it on a constant so I'll say updated uh, to do will be equal to await so I need to call const here const updated to do will be equal to await to do dot find by id and update and then I call this if I save this file it will be uh, out of formatted by prettier I am using prettier as an extension here okay so this is what we have now this updated to do which is returned right here will be our old version of the to do but what we want to get is the new version of of our to do okay and to get the new version we need to also include uh, another object here and this object contains the property called new and the value here is true so we'll get the new document which have already been updated uh, by this particular method now the next step that we need to perform is to send our updated to do to the client so just right here uh, we will say res dot send and pass our updated to do here updated to do so i'll save this file to auto format and then we need to catch the errors so i'll place this code where we are updating the to do and sending it to the client in a try and catch block so right here i'll say try and pass this code in here and then the next code will be catch and since we have already performed uh, such a thing i'll just copy this copy and then down here uh, just after try I'll paste it here okay if I save and then scroll at the top uh, this is what we have try we place our updated to do in a constant and then we use this method to update the to do find by ID and update the first parameter is the ID of the document we want to update the second parameter is our request uh, dot body and then we set a flag here new to true so that we can get the updated to do back and send it to the client and then we catch the error rest.status 500 meaning that this is a server error and then we send the error message to the client or also log it to the console so this is how we can perform a put request and as i said before a put usually uh, replaces the existing document with a new version of the document now let's test this one on postman so i'll come to postman if i perform a get request so i will use one of this one here we send this request so you see we don't have any documents in our collection so let's perform a post request to add a new document so i'll perform a post request and send and now this is our new document now i need the id of this document for us to update it i'll copy and then we perform a put request we include this id at the end here and then in the body of the request we can update our to do so as i told you before we need to send a new version of this to do at our body of the request so right here we can say our, our edited to do and then uh, we can change the name here to Chow Charles we can set is complete to false and also we need to pass a date to this document for the date I will reduce this one so I will reduce the date and then 
the id we don't need to uh, update that name other is complete and version we don't need to touch that so if we send this request we should get our updated to do back okay so send and there you go so we have a date which is this we have an id we have a name we have an author and is complete so you can see all the properties that we updated have been edited but we didn't include a uid and it have been set to null so i'll show you how uh, we will send all our updates from the from the front end because on the front end we'll only have one input field for the name but we won't have other input fields for the other for is complete for date for now don't worry about how we will do it uh, we will handle that when we get to react and that's it that is how we handle output requests so in the last episode we were able to create an endpoint to handle put requests and in this episode i want us to create another endpoint to handle patch requests so both put and patch are used to uh, edit documents but what is the difference between put and patch so with put we usually replace uh, the body of our document with a complete new version so we include all uh, the data here and when we submit that we replace the existing document with our new data and when we omit some of these properties you'll see that we get null for that particular property for example in this request we omitted a uid and uh, when we submitted it we got a response of uid as null so at the body of the request we should include all the properties that represent our document okay someone asked me why i didn't include a uid in the body of the request and the reason is currently we don't have a user but when we work with our front end and add authentication we'll be able to add a uid to the body of the request now with patch we can edit just a, a particular property and that is what we are going to do we are not replacing the whole body of our document we are going to just replace a, a certain property you can replace all of them if you want but in this case we are just going to replace one and the endpoint that we are going to create is for marking a to do as done or not done so the property that we'll be editing is this particular property now when we performed this request uh, there was an error that was popping on our a command prompt here and uh, it is a duplication warning and it's complaining that find one and update and find one and delete without uh, the use of use find and modify set to false are duplicated so to get rid of this duplication warning we should add this option use find and modify when connecting to mongodb so when i come back to my code and go to index.js scroll at the bottom here we should add this option just right here and we should set this to false now when we send requests we should not get that duplication warning now let's go to our todos.js file and we create another endpoint just after put and we'll create it here using our router and this time we are creating an endpoint to handle patch requests the first parameter is a path and we should include an id to this path and then the second parameter is a callback function which is async it have access to request and response and we can update our document in here so the first thing that we will do is to check whether a to do exists or not so right here 
I'll come and reuse this code uh, where we were finding a to do by ID and also using an if statement to check whether it exists or not. So I'll copy that and then come to our patch and paste it here. And we should also do the same for our delete. Before deleting a to do, we should check whether it exists or not. And then uh, if it doesn't exist, we send a 404 error uh, to the client. So in our router.delete, I'll also be that code right here. Okay. Now let's come back to our router.patch. If our to do exists, we want to update it. Okay. So right here, we'll still use find uh, by ID and update. So we use our model to do dot find by ID and update. And then we invoke this method. The first parameter is the ID of the document that we want to update. So we use request uh, dot params dot ID. So that is the ID. And then the second parameter is an object here and the body of this object should contain the property that we want to edit and this endpoint is for marking a to do as done or not so we will target the is complete property and what we are getting here is the to do that we want to edit so we have access to that particular to do right here and we can also target the is complete property on this particular to do just like this so we can say to do dot is complete and then we want to every time we send a request to this endpoint we want to change this property from true to false or from false to true so that is checking and unchecking uh, that particular to do so right here at the front of this we should use an exclamation mark so this means that we set the is complete to be the opposite of to do dot is complete so if to do dot is complete here is true our is complete will now be false if this one is false this will be true so this is what uh, this line of code does and what we get after performing this request is our updated to do so we should await this and then store the result on a constant and now we can send our updated to do to the client so we can say uh, rest.send updated to do since this is an asynchronous call we should wrap it in a try and catch block so that we can catch any errors okay so right here i'll use try and i move this code inside the try block and then in case of an error we will catch it right here so i'll copy this code where we were catching an error and I can paste it here. When I save, the prettier extension will auto format the code. So let's do a quick recap. Right here, we are checking whether a to do exists or not. If it exists, we use to do dot find by ID and update to update the to do. The first parameter is the ID of the to do that we want to update, and then here we set the property that we are updating and uh, after we get our updated to do we send it to the client if there is an error in this process we call a catch method here we have access to the error object and we can send that error message to the client or log it to the console now we can test this endpoint using postman so i'll come back to postman so right here i'll open a new tab and then select patch and I want this uh, path right here so I'll copy this path come back to patch here 
and paste it here so we have the id of our to do so i want the body here to be empty and we won't include any uh, json object at our body so when i come back here to put what we want to edit is this particular property is complete so when we send our patch request here this is complete should uh, come back as true so i'll come back to the patch here and send this request okay and there we go now we get our feedback where is complete is true and this is the only property that was edited and if i send this request again now is complete is false so it's like we are checking and unchecking this particular property and this is so because we only included this property right here it's the only thing that we are editing so that's it for this video so in the last episode we concluded our crud operation endpoints and we were planning to move on to authentication but there is something that have come to my attention so before we move on to authentication i want us to perform a better error handling so i deleted all the documents in my mongodb collection so we don't have any documents but i also made sure that i grabbed a valid id for a certain document so although i have this id there is no document in our mongodb that have this id because i deleted it so if i perform this put request we should get a to do not found error which is a 44 error so i will send this and we get to do not found message now what if i supply an invalid id here so this is a valid id even though the document does not exist what if I just get a particular ID which is not a valid object ID for MongoDB? So we should get a different error and not to do not found error. And let's try this one out. I'll send this. And you'll notice a weird behavior. This process is hanging. We are not properly catching our errors. So if I come to my console, you'll see that uh, unhandled promise rejection, cast error, cast to object ID field for value, this one. So this is not a valid object ID and we did not properly catch that error. So what we should do is to come back to our endpoints and uh, change how we catch our errors. So let's start with the first endpoint here, which is our get endpoint and when I check at this, everything is fine. We are properly catching the errors. And for our post request, uh, we are also properly catching the, the errors. But for our put request here, everything looks fine, but it is not. And that is because of this particular line of code where we are finding a, a document by ID. So this is an async action and we did not wrap it in a try and catch block so when it draws an error it will make our requests to hang and the error will be on the console but the client won't know what is the problem so what we should do is to uh, change this try and move it at the top here just before our find by id okay so i'll paste this one here and now all our async action which is find by id here and find by id and update are inside the try block and then we should do the same for patch and delete so i'll move this line of code i'll cut it and uh, paste it here actually at the top here because this is where we are finding by id i'll paste and save this file to properly uh, out of format and then I'll move to the delete and do the same I'll save and there we go and now let's try this one out by sending an invalid ID 
and see whether our server will stop instead of giving us a response so i'll come to postman and send this request one more time and there we go now we are getting uh, an error here cast to object id failed because this is not a valid mongodb id and this is an internal server error so this is now a much better error handling instead of sending a request and it hangs we at least get a message right here so in the next video we'll start now talking about authentication